Anyway, uh, and, and so that, without further ado, here, here's the morning message. Um, shalom, my name is Alan Berner, and hi, Alan Berner, and I am a worship leader. Uh, I am, I'm the uh, lead elder here at Beit Zaid, and I'm also the worship leader at, at Beit Zaid. And uh, last time I was at the Bema, we talked about worship. So uh, I hadn't done a series in a long, long time anywhere, and so I thought, you know what? I think I have a little more information. I could probably squeeze a part two out of, out of this. We, we, uh, we talked about, the next slide, we talked about the red sports car, right? Uh, and, and we decided that we as human beings put value on things. We put value on, on technology. We put uh, value on uh, houses and vacation destinations and, and, and you know, fancy sports cars. And, uh, and I, asked, I asked you, how much do we value our relationship with our Heavenly Father? We worship Him because we value Him, right? We, have some, we put some value on Him. We value the Father, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And, and we then talked about why we worship. Slide three, we worship Him because He commanded it. God commanded us to worship. And He, he says, don't go worshiping after American idols, right, or Egyptian idols. Don't worship the emperors or, or the leaders, the presidents or the prime ministers, right? And don't, don't worship Porsche sports cars. He talked, we talked about praising Him in the good times and especially in the bad times. And then slide four, here, it was a, the second reason we worship, worship Him is uh, worship is our way of giving thanks and acknowledging who He is. After all, He's our Creator. He is the one who delivered us, the one who saved us. He delivered us out of slavery in Egypt and saved us in eternal life through Yeshua HaMashiach. Slide 5, likewise in the incredible words of Psalm 100 where it says, Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into His presence with singing. Um, so so we're, supposed to, we're supposed to make a joyful noise. Two criteria when you're, when you're, when you're praising God, right, is you have to Make a noise, and the noise has to be joyful. Does it have to be exactly in tune or, or in pitch? No. I mean, if you're a skilled musician, you know, if you're part of the worship team, we're going we're gonna to strive for playing all the right notes and singing all the right words and everything. But if, if, it's, if you make the joyful noise, as long as it's a noise and, it's lo- and as long as it's joyful, if, if it doesn't sound like, you know, you're, you're squeezing a cat too hard or something like that, then, then it's okay, right? Using a little levity, I hope that's okay. Slide six, uh, we, we talked about uh, all of the scriptures. We didn't talk about all the scriptures. We talked about the, there's, there's a large portion of the scriptures that talk about praise that include thanks, thankfulness or thanksgiving, right? They talk about honor. They talk about praise, right? And then the next slide. Third, we talked about that worship is the means by which we invite Him into our presence. Whenever we come together in worship, we become a habitation for His presence. So we, we figured out what worship was, and then we talked a little bit about the how, how to worship, right? Worship involves, next slide, all aspects of human personality. It's physical, it's emotional, it's intellectual, and it's spiritual. And next slide, we spoke about letting all things, including worship, be done decently and in order, right? We, we, we need to make sure that everything is done. That doesn't mean that, like I said, if you're out there worshiping and praising God, if you're singing, it doesn't mean that all the notes have to be right. But it shouldn't be something that's distracting or taking, taking the, the attention off of the Father and putting it on, on you, right? And your cowbell. <laughs> Praise the Lord, no one brings cowbells to congregation member meetings. Uh, but w- until we have a percussion player up front, then maybe the cowbell will be a big thing. I don't know. Make worship a daily part of your life. Don't just reserve it for Shabbat mornings. Whether it's morning, noon, or night, you can worship Him in your prayer life. When you drive to work, you can worship Him. When you're alone or with family and friends, it doesn't have to just be up here you know, in, uh, on Saturday morning. This is a great place to do it. But you can do it in your own personal life, and I encourage you to to develop time where you put on the CD and you know of worship music and just just worship the Father in your in your personal time. Highly recommend it. So that's the recap. That's the if you saw a little recap up there in the top of the the right hand because that's that's what we talked about last week. 
I wanted to spend the rest of my time this morning discussing the differences between praise and worship. And I, and I, I just kind of throw that out there. What is the difference between praise and worship? A lot of people say the praise songs are the fast songs and the worship songs are the slow songs. And that may be true, <laughs> somewhat, but there's more to the, these terms of praise and worship, right? Uh, praise is the fast songs and worship is the slow songs. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Shabbat shalom. <laughs> That'd be great. Understanding the difference between praise and worship can bring a new depth to the way we honor the Lord. Throughout the Bible, the commands to praise the Lord are too nu numerous to mention. Next slide. Uh, angels in the heavenly host are commanded to praise the Lord. And you can find that in Psalms 89, verse 5. Psalms 103, verse 20. Psalm 148, verse 2. All inhabitants of the earth are instructed to praise the Lord. We find that in Psalms 138, verse 4, and Romans 15, verse 11. We can praise Him with singing, Isaiah 12, 5, Psalms 9, verse 11. We can praise Him with shouting, Psalms 33, verse 1, and Psalms 98, verse 4. We can praise Him with the dance, hallelujah for the dance, Psalms 150, verse 4. And we can praise Him with musical instruments. And I, I, I'll make these, these scriptural references available uh, on, on Facebook, maybe later tonight after sundown, so you don't have to get all of this. Musical instruments, 1 Chronicles 13, verse 8, Psalms 108, verse 2, and also Psalms 150, verses 3 through 5. Next slide. Praise is the joyful recounting of all God has done for us. It is closely intertwined with thanksgiving, as we offer back to God appreciation for His mighty works on our behalf. Praise is universal and can be applied. I think I have another slide for that. Does it come up there? Yeah, praise is universal, and it can be applied to other relationships as well. See, we can, we can praise anybody and everybody. For instance, we can praise our family. We can praise our friends. We can praise our boss. We can even praise your, your local FedEx uh, delivery guy driver. <laughs> if you wanted to, I, I mean, you know, no, not here though, <laughs> later. Next slide. Praise does not require anything of us. It's merely the truthful acknowledgement of the righteous acts of another. So, you know, I can say Garrett did a really good job with the liturgy this morning, which he did. I'm, I'm not making that up. He, he really did. And that is, that is putting praise on Garrett. That, that he, he's studied, he's, he's, he's practiced the liturgy, he's, he's, you know, looking at the Hebrew root words of all this stuff, and, and he's, 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 you know, coming in ready and prepared to lead liturgy. I can praise him for that. But uh, since God has done many wonderful deeds, He is the one who is most worthy of all the praise, right? Psalm 18, verse 3, you can read more about that there. Um, worship, however, comes from a different place within our spirits. Next slide. Worship should be reserved for God alone. Next slide. Let's take a look at Luke verses uh, four, verse, uh, sorry, chapter four, verse eight. Yeshua answered him, "The Tanakh says, worship Adonai your God and serve him only. Serve him only, right? Worship is the the art of losing self self in the adoration of another. Praise can be a part of worship, but worship goes beyond praise." Praise is easy, worship is not. Worship gets to the heart of who we are. To truly worship God, we must let go of our self-worship, and we must be willing to humble ourselves before God, surrender every part of our lives to His control, and adore Him for who He is, not just what He has done. Worship is a lifestyle, not just an occasional activity. And Yeshua said the Father is seeking those who will worship Him in, next slide, spirit and truth. I could, I could preach a whole sermon on this verse right here. Don't let me do that this morning, but I, I, I will read it, and then I'm going, to just, I'm going to expound on it just a little bit. It says, but the time is coming indeed, it's here now, when the true worshipers will worship the Father spiritually and truly or most translations say, in spirit and in truth. For these are the kind of people the Father wants worshiping Him. You see, and I may have alluded to it a little in the prayer before worship this morning, God wants, and He says there's a time coming when the real, true worshipers will worship Him in spirit and in truth. The spirit, well, 
If, if you've been born again, so to speak, if you've received Yeshua as your Savior, if you're walking with Yeshua as, as uh, your Hamashiach, as, as your Messiah, then you have the Holy Spirit. So check, check one thing, right? And, and then you, you have to go to a biblical definition of truth. What is truth? The only time we see truth defined in Scripture, it says, your Torah is truth, right? So if, now I'm not saying you're, you're following all 613 commandments, because let's be honest, we can't follow all 613 commandments. For instance, I'm not a woman, so there's parts of the Torah that do not apply to me. Can we, can we say amen? There are parts of the Torah that are for the, the, the high priest. I'm not a priest. There are parts of the Torah that are for the Levites. I'm not a Levite. So I can't follow all 613 13 commandments. Yeshua didn't follow all 613 commandments. But if you are using the Torah, if you are applying the Torah in your life, if you're trying to do the best you can to follow Torah, and you're allowing the grace of, of, our, of our Lord and Savior Yeshua to make up the difference, then, then we can worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen? I, I, I told you I'd get, I'd get all preachy on that right there. I, I have, there's a whole message brewing inside me on that, and I, I, need to, I don't have time for that because we have Oneg later. <laughs> <clears throat> Hallelujah. So, spirit and truth. Yeshua said the Father is seeking those who will worship Him in spirit and in truth. In Scripture, praise is usually presented as boisterous, joyful, and uninhibited. Think about King David. How did he, how did he, how did he worship the Lord? He, he tore off all of his clothes and, and, and praised the Lord naked, right? Not recommending that in a congregational worship service, but it was uninhibited. It was joyful. It was boisterous, right? <laughs> Come on, let's do it. No, not really. God, God invites praise of all kinds for his creation. Yeshua said that if people don't praise God, even the stones will cry out. Let's look at Luke 19, verse 40. But he answered them, I tell you that if they keep quiet, the stones will shout. It's our duty to, to, to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. It's our duty to worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But you know what? If we don't do it, God will figure out a way to, to get the worship that's due him. He'll, he'll get some rocks out in the parking lot to, to, to lift up a praise or two to him, right? Right? When the Bible mentions worship, however, the tone changes. We, re we read verses like, Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. That's a Psalm 96, 9. And come, let us worship and bow down. Psalm 95, verse 6. Often worship is coupled with the act of bowing or kneeling, which shows humility and contrition, contrition right? It's, it's realizing that, that, you, that you've sinned and you're sinful and that you're, you're truly sorry for that sin, which, you know, should lead to repentance, uh, should, should lead to repentance, but sometimes it doesn't in certain circles. <clears throat> uh, that was references 2 Chronicles 29, verse 28, Hebrews 11, verse 21, and Revelations 19, verse 10. It is through true work... Actually, I have some of those. I, do, do I have uh, Hebrews? Let me, let me see Hebrews real quick. By trusting Yaakov when he was dying, blessed each of Yosef's jo sons leaning on his walking stick as he bowed in prayer. Here's a man who is bowing, right? He's bowing in reverence. Might, might be because of old age and he's leaning on his staff in, in this particular passage. But, but it's that leaning, it's that bowing in reverence to the Father, right? It's through true worship that we invite the Ruach HaKadosh or the Holy Spirit to speak to us, convict us, and to comfort us. Through worship, we realign our priorities with God's and acknowledge Him once more as the righteous Lord of our lives. Just as praise is intertwined with thanksgiving, worship is intertwined with surrender. It's impossible to worship God and anything else at the same time. Throw me, throw me Luke 4, 8. Do we got that one? Yeshua answered him, the Tanakh says, worship Adonai your God and serve him only. You can't worship God and also serve man. You can't worship the president and also worship God. The, 
to, sorry, we'll move on. The physical acts often associated with worship, bowing, kneeling, lifting hands, help to create the necessary attitude of humility required for real worship. Worship is an attitude of the heart. A person can go through the outward motions and not be worshiping. Let's look at Psalms 51, verses 16 and 17. It says, Rescue me from the guilt of shedding blood, God, God of my salvation. Then my tongue will sing about your righteousness. Next verse. Adonai, open my lips, then my mouth will praise you. There's, there's a, let me see the first verse again. There's, there's singing about his righteousness. My, the, you know, uh, God of my salvation, then after he rescue, rescues us, I'll get it out here in a minute. After he rescues us, we're asking him to, to open, open our lips, to use our tongue to sing about his righteousness, to, to open our lips that then our mouth will praise you, right? And then we have Matthew verses six, uh, chapter 6, verse 5 and 6. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray standing in the synagogues and on street corners so that people can see them. Yes, I tell you, they have their reward already. Next verse. But you, when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret. Your Father will see what is done in secret and reward you. God sees the heart. And he desires and deserves sincere, heartfelt praise and worship. And so, as a worship leader, I'm, I can tell I'm very emboldened and very impassioned about praise and worship. But you ought to be too. Not to say, you're, not to say anyone in this room isn't, but we, we need to be excited about the opportunity. It, it's it's uh, one more thing in our arsenal, right? Where we can, we can pray. We can, we can read His Word, we can use His Word to thwart the, the, the plans of the enemy, and we can also confuse the enemy, because even in, our, even in a bad situation, what, 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 is, what is Lisa doing? She's praising the Lord. And the enemy's like, what on earth? I, I've, you know, I've, put a rough, I've put her through a rough patch, right? And she's still lifting her hands and praising God. She's still giving God the glory. She's still worshiping her Creator. And uh, so I encourage you, Get on the bandwagon. We are, a, we are a, a, a congregation who worships the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And, and you know, it doesn't have to be some weird charismatic mess, but we can worship Him in spirit and in truth, the truth of His Torah the, with His Holy Spirit, and, and great things will happen when you worship God. Even if they don't, He's still worthy of your praise, Right? Right? We don't praise Him just because, you know, we just don't go after God because of all the benefits, but praise God for the benefits. Amen? I think I'm done. Wait a minute. Yep, that's it. <laughs> Shavuot Tov. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you very much.